Kindness, an act of helping another person in one way or the other. Kindness is an essential human trait and is seen as a great thing from the Stoic perspective. But when one becomes too kind to the wrong person, it can end up having terrible consequences on one's mind, body, and money. That's why we have made today's video. So make sure you stay till the end so you can fully absorb the wisdom of the ancient Stoics and not let overkindness be the downfall of you. Before we start, I would like to speak on our Stoic newsletter. If you are unaware, we have a Stoic newsletter that you can join where we share with you ancient Stoic wisdom to better yourself and your life. Without further ado, here is 10 ways overkindness can hurt you. Number one, you get taken advantage of. When you are too giving, overly generous with your time and resources, or too willing to please others without setting healthy boundaries, some manipulative personalities will invariably take your kindness for granted. These draining individuals may grow to repeatedly ask more and more of you without reciprocation or appreciation in return. You may spend weeks, months, or even years expending tremendous emotional efforts and serving thanklessly only to be left feeling deeply exhausted, unfulfilled, and painfully used in the process by those accepting but never appreciating. Over time, this one-sided dynamic can breed secret resentment as your needs go chronically unmet and unnoticed despite overextending yourself to meet the same individuals again and again. You may even unintentionally attract other manipulative people once word spreads of your inability to refuse requests or establish reasonable limits around your goodness. Overkindness in these dysfunctional contexts sadly becomes perceived as weakness to exploit rather than sincere care to cultivate mutually. And without enough discernment in place protecting your precious time and energy from vampire dynamics, toxic personalities will predictably sap your reserves dry without second thought, leaving you running perpetually on empty until burnout eventually crashes final demands. The key remains upholding determined yet compassionate boundaries first, then generously giving from surplus once essential well-being is nurtured. As airlines wisely instruct for emergency protocols, always secure your own oxygen mask before attempting to rescue others. Shield soul before extending selves. This empowers truly uplifting them sustainably through modeling self-care first. Number two, you feel resentful. When you chronically say yes to people's requests and demands even when you genuinely want to say no for the sake of your own needs and limitations, that unaddressed resentment incrementally builds up inside. Left unaddressed, the repressed bitterness emerging from those accumulated unspoken no's you felt obliged to meet with dutiful yeases can slowly metastasize into simmering resentment. Like a slow leak gradually flooding engine compartments, this unresolved anger silently floods your unconscious mind as well until suddenly emotional warning lights erupt signaling system overload. By consistently overriding authentic refusals, our soul knows intuitively aligned best for our health and capacity in given situations at hand. We inject disingenuousness into character, corroding integrity from within. The meta-message becomes trained. I accept disregarding my own needs frequently to secure external validation through people-pleasing. This fosters inner discord, sowing seeds of contempt subtly directed both inward and outward. In the process, chronic indirect resentment increasingly stresses body and psyche exponentially as real joy shrink, losing genuine connections nurtured through truth-telling. Over the months and years, that accrued bitterness often manifests through moodiness, isolation, passive-aggressive reactions, undiagnosed depression or emotional outbursts once threshold breaches help healthy regulation. Toxicity emerges slowly before detection. The key remains learning confident transparency, gently communicating authentic needs and limitations consistently despite innate people-pleasing tendencies, tempting us ignore inner wisdom, easily overshadowed outer voices. By courageously reclaiming vocabulary, declining unrealistic requests early, we sustain integrity, nourishing all relationships through judicious carefulness, applied understanding greatest commandment love wells from within before spilling over outward. Listen first lovingly your soul's voice. 
number three. You neglect your own needs. When we remain preoccupied satisfying people-pleasing priorities continually, our personal health requirements often get minimized, disregarded, or overruled to detriment. Gradually, this imbalance breeds physical, emotional, and mental exhaustion if left uncorrected over time. Caregiver burnout awaits those defaulting reflexively into supportive servant roles out of relational anxiety, avoiding conflict or abandonment. Driven to secure external validation through usefulness, the pathological nice and helpful person types reflexively utter yes while internally screaming no from depths neglected, unheard. The soul quietly keeps accounts tallying unpaid debts, accruing within despite maintaining external performance excellence. And without welcoming full-spectrum emotions into conscious awareness, gently through mindfulness practices, giving feelings space process openly, repressed anger and sadness, accumulate toxic taxes guaranteed due submitted later jealousy, anxiety and depression when accounts finally called payable crashing fantasy, maintaining perfect servile consistency meeting everyone's needs except your own properly. Starving inner integrity bears consequences. Restoring balance begins acknowledging honestly areas where people-pleasing patterns dismiss healthy needs for solitude, emotional availability, or mental focus required occasionally inward self-nourishment filling reserves tapped routinely outward in service others. Consider creating communications guidelines, openly addressing broken rhythms, requiring loving course corrections, restoring relationships grounded equitable give-receive ratios from both parties consciously. Mutuality matters. Blind overfunctioning rarely substitutes sustainably for burning sacrificial wax temporary glow, seeming sufficient warmth connections failing honor equal interdependency. But once wick extinguished fully through fatigue meeting unrealistic expectations, light wanes relationships suddenly chilled by gnawing confusion stemming continued presence generosity taken granted without reciprocity. Safeguard inner fire first. Your burning transforms more through mystery attraction, led first from rekindled core. Let wax work speak louder than waning words. Number four, you enable bad behavior. This compassion untampered by wisdom prevents the other person from learning healthier life habits. When we continue rescuing and helping friends or family members that repeatedly take selfish advantage of our kindness, we reinforce insidiously their entitlement, irresponsibility, and victim mentality assumptions that condones exploiting people as saviors, obligated indulging their whims and absorbing consequences caused by their behavioral choices without accountability taken seriously. Though intentions originate earnestly from caring empathy, Excess generosity shown the chronically irresponsible or manipulative personality types serves often undermine their motivation, seeking necessary help through counseling, recovery groups, skills, training, etc., ultimately supporting maturation. Quick fix patchwork repairs enable denial and avoidance of rigorous self examination, required uprooting self sabotaging tendencies preserved through projection outward rather than owning change courageously from within. Kindness requires balancing gentle understanding that judges not with firm compassion ever holding others capable. Taking next steps, even when unseen able witness yet unfolding beyond concepts still believed possible constrained worldviews that pigeonhole people limiting through comforting stereotypes. What fragility prefers presuming than risking personal evolution's hero's journey, demanding grit transcending McGill increases comfort, condemns all lethargy avoids. The key lies remaining guardians of truth through hard experiences, when first walking alone paths, asking much without guarantee anything given beyond opportunity. Self-discover direction soul already knows intuitively well, before compensating world provides permission. Slips validating worthiness, gross blessings, hidden trials themselves reveal in time, as phoenixes rise, reborn flames temporarily. Thought destroy instead. Strengthen shattered shells once containing greater hearts and visions undiscouraged. Lead ahead by your example. Let them choose learning own timing what mistakes provide. Number five, you harbor covert contracts. When recipients inevitably fail meeting imagined obligations, we then feel deeply confused, disappointed, or 
even enraged by breached unofficial relational arrangements existing only in wishful psychological projection. Covert contracts constitute agreements orchestrated imaginarily in our own minds that were never explicitly voiced, defined, or consented upon mutually in transparent communication verbalized between both parties directly involved. We simply assume unspoken rules like, if I always listen generously as therapist friend for hours without needing equal time in return, then they should also proactively offer exceptional emotional supportiveness during my rare crisis moments despite our usual roles positions. But flawed logic wishes not stated directly cannot expect manifestation when other individuals remain oblivious, reading thoughts assigning them roles like sensitive responder when nowhere consented actually filling position. They respond according what patterns demonstrated consistent reliability over years. Reasonable defined friendship contract through mirrored reciprocity, meeting each other's needs reasonably balanced as able. Infer expectations subtly beyond behaviors evidenced. The solution requires taking ownership communicating needs and agreements sincerely through open dialogue, consenting parties share equally. Define friendship jobs cooperatively carrying friendship workload. Disclose feelings vulnerably while inviting transparency feelings intimately shared, also requesting clearly promises nurture bonds healthily versus assumptions projecting blindness by subtle entitlement, justifying resentment unfulfilled. True friendships thrive through good faith communication, compassionately reaching empathetic understanding, leave false hopes and covert contracts behind. Number six, you attract energy vampires. Truly kind-hearted, caring people often magnetize assorted victims, complainers, martyrs, and serial takers, unconsciously seeking hosts for unhealed emotional turmoil, ever thirsting validation attention and guidance rarely satiated long before wellsprings run dry, leaving behind dazed caretaker souls accidentally exploited by those avoiding self-work for temporary relief. Like any predator, this human variety of psychic vampire keenly seeks and targets overly nice, conscientious folks exuding compassion and generosity, paired with lack of personal boundaries saying no to defend their precious energies better spent uplifting balanced relationships, mutually nourishing for both parties. Instead, these parasites latch onto hosts chronically giving, while they as takers unendingly consume without remorse, debilitating the empath's own emotional, mental, and physical reserves, leading to dangerous states of depletion, anxiety, and depression, crash landing catastrophically once low-hanging fruits of freely offered altruism vanish abruptly no longer displayed to feed anyone opportunistic enough to bite the outstretched hand once extended too far too frequently without smarter self-protection habits wisely established. The solution requires reasserting healthy skepticism early when assessing whether sustainable symmetry exists in a relationship or if gaming ploys seek only what can be taken rather than given back in fair exchange. Stand your ground firmly yet compassionately exposing manipulation playbooks early diverting disasters unnecessary, had truth tactfully intervened, saving all involved through illuminating codependent roots, better healed by attracting interdependence. Lead each back toward greener pastures where souls can thrive together, in communities cooperatively transcending fear-based instability cycles pretending order. Remind all players of our shared humanity, outshining superficial personas, born reactively from egoically grasping at survival roots, better nourished through mutual understanding. Starve vampires unconsciously through non-compliance, and they organically transform into healers themselves, renewed by higher purpose and learning to give what they most wish to receive. Number seven, you build resentment in others. When our misguided over-assistance accidentally removes struggles intended serving as growth lessons for others to work through independently, we cheat them opportunities building competence, confidence, self-reliance, none possible rescuing or over-functioning chronically despite best short-term intentions, easing discomforts temporarily through quick fixes. Though relief seems compassionate momentarily, downstream dysfunction emerges silently, sabotaging independence in those denied dignity. Learning provide own solutions eventually. The key lies uplifting others' capacity regularly take next-leveled steps 
within current reach, thereby expanding growth edges continually rather than encouraging stagnation or regression into childish modes. Dependency that conveniently impede maturation adult behaviors, necessity eventually demands. Enablement seems charitable when actually crystallizing lower evolution through squirreling away struggles intended strength and self-sufficiency sooner than later. Therefore, reframe reactive tendency do everything loved ones capable, wrestling themselves despite discomforts or complaints, tempting you intervene. Play hero resolve matters they face consequences brought through earlier negligence repeatedly. Natural order finds better balance each acting in integrity, upholding personal responsibility as fulcrums, shift relationships into equanimity, benefiting both parties more sustainably, far longer than temporary alleviations, worsening codependent roots subtly reinforced, despite kind-hearted intensities aiming opposite outcomes unconsciously manifest through excessive interventions, rationalizing why always necessary limiting visibility, given enough space try first fail better, without safety nets inserted enabling avoidance accountability for dedicated efforts improving beyond comfort zones where potential often hides awaiting summons crack shell. Tough love lays foundations ultimately uplifting all higher. Number eight, you martyr yourself. This individually and relationally destructive mental complex breeds only isolation, burnout, and eventual hostility from the very people intended helping. Martyr syndrome constitutes a mistaken savior identity whereby we assume Atlas-style responsibility, carrying companions, families, and communities on shoulders beyond strength's reasonable capacity or accountability. We take on messianic gravity, trying to rescue everyone from life's basic challenges intended spur personal growth, wrongly believing that self-neglect and self-erasure serve saintly virtue rather than traumatic conditioning. This manifests through compulsive habits, selflessly paying debts unasked, solving crises single-handedly unwanted, working thanklessly graveyard shifts no necessity required, except fabricated compulsion, obsessed proving love through outrageous sacrifice, rationalized virtue rather than neurosis demand therapy, clarifying over functioning what healthy living expects, all must eventually provide themselves long-term, once emergency scaffolds removed pressuring purpose forward, self-empowered. While occasional intervention suits some situational crisis temporarily, chronic self-martyrdom breeds only resentment recipients when unrealistic expectations meet inevitable limitations, either support availability or sanity itself, crashing dangerous thresholds clearly indicating needing release burdens now transfers ownership their own pathways forward without codependent crutches crippling independent progress. However, well-meaning initial aid prevents natural resilience, building both provider and client through non-compliance necessities disciplined assignment, all souls confront alone for growth to occur ongoing. The solution requires relinquishing delusions, personal responsibility, or boundaries violated continually deplete unacknowledged inner resources, desperately requiring protection first before outward output, multiplies impossibly attempting satisfy humanity's innate psychic thirst love which can temporarily be borrowed by not owned outside divine flow. Healing springs from resting in one's essence rather than racing rat wheels vainly attempting fallen angels destined walk life's essential step themselves toward salvation. Nobody achieved them without inner conversion reflecting outward eventually liberation. Lead way dwelling compassionately in own healed presence first. Number nine, you struggle with conflict. The ninth risk over kindness breeds includes increased struggle tolerating interpersonal conflict that festers unaddressed due to conflict avoidance tendencies prioritizing keeping peace through passive means rather than proactively naming issues assertively before they escalate destructively for all parties involved. Allowing tensions to grow uncontrolled eventually controls you. Because chronically kind people pleasers feel averse to openly discussing problems frankly fearing damage to rapport or abandonment by others when transparency is needed. Troublesome matters often get minimized, denied, or endured silently far longer than healthy, ultimately building anxiety exponentially internalized long before courage is found to formally address elephants in the living room no longer possible to ignore. Long-term sacrifice of peace today risks war tomorrow.
Unintegrated anger simmering beneath genteel facades, pretending everything is fine, gradually replaces authentic kindness and compassion, once guiding relationships with simmering coldness, isolation, and contempt that masquerades civility superficially, but cannot be contained forever without imploding dramatically after failed attempts at managing inevitable conflicts adroitly through mature, proactive communication channels, establishing win-win understanding. Even kindness has its limits tested, needing integration with other aspects of human wholeness to reconcile shadows responsibly. The solution requires first finding self-acceptance, fully feeling, processing and taking ownership of all emotional spectrums alive innately within, rather than judging aspects like anger as intrinsically evil or unjustified for existing at all. Then cultivate constructive conflict engagement habits, directly addressing issues honestly and compassionately as immediately as tensions are sensed, assured that invested good faith resolution exists on both sides. Speak truth gently but boldly without defensiveness or aggression. Find the middle way balancing gentle strength, softening rigidity with vulnerability, powerlessness with also. Mastering conflict starts with self-mastery by allowing. Number 10. You lose yourself. When generous outpouring supersedes diligently filling your cup first before overflow, nourishes thirsty ground needing replenishment, depleted inner resources cannot sustain outputs perpetually externally oriented preventing necessary introspection and remembrance through meditations that truly refill wells running dry, yet demands increase insisting supporters broadcast broader bandwidth like far-reaching rivers, forgetting to feed the humble springs birthed inland once made possible overflowing banks ever flowing outward with abundance first filled inward for distribution viable ongoing. The renewable secret dwells in heading straight upstream, returning into headwaters hitherto, Busyness tempting even best intentions must eventually acknowledge humbling limitations to refresh by returning and refilling depleted reserves now tapped, which once running gravely low cannot pour outward wellspring further as famine threatens providers and recipients alike, counting on provisions projected predictably, but unsupported by unspecified sustainability plans, accounting for interdependent cycles protecting partners through ecology, balancing equity wisdom defines polite society. Civilizations depend intimately, though dangerously, ignore when inequalities centralize lavishness at peripheries untenable, processed conveniently out of view behind curtains veiling starvation of spirit and soul beneath shining towers, enjoying temporarily primitive accumulation, bulging with bounties stripped from surrounding communities. Yet deprived of integrity of values, sane longer term must redistribute attending to mass needs transparently through economic dignity afforded all classes, liberating indentured ideologies persevering despite antiquated caste beliefs that support exploitation fear feeds temporarily until education and justice make progress meeting turfs. Modernity still fiercely protects, but wisdom rests in reuniting all vestiges into families progressing together harmoniously, each member magnifying strengths united while covering weaknesses compassionately through cooperation whereas competition divides fearfully attempting control over land limited and serving needs equally of all provided. If you are listening to this, thank you for staying till the end. If you feel any of these stoic lessons resonated with you today, feel free to start a stoic discussion in the comments. I welcome stoic discussions as they are what the great stoics like Marcus Aurelius and Seneca advised for. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like. And if you want more content like this, subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching, and as always, I hope you find peace and serenity in the Stoic ways.